What's up, DigiDestins? This is Kyle D, better known as Rhyme Avatar, and today we are going to be going over none other than Japanese Tuesday. Well, we're just going to review the full look at what EX7 brought to the table. There's 163 decks to talk about, so let's get into it. Just wanting to talk about the meta recap. It's very simple to see what happened here, is that at least with EX7, it kind of felt healthier in the re retrospective it's going to be a quick format for us since it was a very quick format for them it's just how the speed of the sets are going to be released for us this is not going to be pleasant but it's you can see the big threes are kind of just standing tall we just had seven great demon lords finally push ahead finally from the from the big being top four to now being the big four so the big three that we knew were blue green imperial new may and blue armor got bumped down by the seven great demon lords because of one added card and that really changed up a little bit but taking a look at it all in all it looks pretty decently healthy for right now nothing's really overly fine over tuned and dominating right now you're still going to face the wall decks of blue armor plus, you know, yellow vaccine. But at the end of the day, that's what you kind of have to deal with. And just taking a look straight across here, you kind of see the bridge gap isn't that bad. You know, from the top three, there's only like a five deck difference. If it gave it out another couple weeks, probably would see some changes too. But taking a look at it, though, our big top 10 really I mean, to be honest with you, I could probably go to seven, 17 decks, really like close to 15 decks or so, just because the top, the final 10th slot could be any of these six, three, six decks, which isn't bad at all. They're really good decks across the board. Diabormont had a resurgent one week, and that's like why it has six tops all of a sudden. But Mirage has always been consistent. Insects have always been consistent. Dawn and Dusk has some form of shenanigans it wants to do. Dragon Links and Nature Spirits kind of just being the newer decks of the format. And then you have the main protagonist is Terramon's Final Evolution Vortex here. So, yeah, we're at seven. So being one of the few new decks to kind of just come out, it's kind of good to see that they're all kind of doing a little bit of something. Cinderella on and kind of really fell flat. The same thing with Hexablau. And then Three Musketeers fell flat a little bit, too. And then you do have, you know, L Lilithmon falling a little flat, too. Just, just a lot of the newer decks kind of just didn't go as crazy as we were hoping for but it kind of we kind of got the same treatment like right here we had the seven great demon lords out the gate pretty well for ourselves and then vortex itself went to seven tops but taking a look though we had 163 decks this format for jp which wasn't bad at all so yeah let's get into the decks first so the big one is the seven great demon lords as you know the deck's main core strategy revolves around this big boy here and then you're just turboing out just to try to get these guys going what you're noticing right now they do d use digimon emperor to slow down new Maimon decks and then they have the shoto tamer to give all their seven great demon lords blocker it gives a great retrospective of how the deck wants to play and it's never bad the way the style that it wants to go i like that they're using sister blanc you know they are trying to turbo so they have to have at least multiple different names and that's why bagra's kind of still hanging out here because it can just play the mat for free which at the end of the day isn't terrible could be a lot worse but yeah taking a look though straight on it the major things about the gate of the deadly sins is that they only had one blocker in the deck with Shoto now, your everything you play now has a shot at being a blocker. And now that can put up some walls, especially with these big boss Digimon that we are playing down. Now you have basically a Creepymon every single turn. Your opponent has to answer this Creepymon blocker status with big numbers. And if they can't, it gets popped the following turn. They just do the same thing over and over again until your opponent just basically wear wear it out. 
And it's not bad. We don't have many decks that can climb just naturally, but that's fine. We're just taking this for a spin and just taking a look here. And then we have Imperial Jermon. Imperial Jermon's doing the same Imperial Jermon things. We kind of didn't get anything crazy new. But if you know how the deck operates, it uses Return of the Ancestors to give you the protection you need. You know, you have Imperial Jermon Ace Paladin mode. That is a great threat in itself. And the powerhouse behind everything that I would say the deck really needed and the only reason why it probably exists in the number it does is not because of its jogressing it's because of the davis and ken tamer being able to play your wormon and or vmon that basically makes your bottom end just complete searchers now your opponent has to deal with you slamming down little guys all the time and then being able to gain a memory and then strip sources from your opponent's digimon is really nasty then we do have the Numemon deck. Numemon hasn't really changed at all. You'll see small variants that have like Venusmon to Valkyriemon Ace or Venusmon. And then you'll see variants with, instead of Valkyrie Ace, Cherubimon Ace. It depends on your matchup in the format, but all in all, still great solid stuff. Then we have Blue, the Ancient Garurumon deck. Just the hybrid shenanigans that we come to know and love that we all know this deck is just basically uses the rush engine on the back end with the Coromon to help draw using Uku's just to go wham 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 to security and then when you're ready to go hybrid shenanigans you basically use your combination here of using Kendo Garurumon on top of your Koji here that basically says you know when this Digimon may want this Digimon may evolve into a card with hybrid his traits from his Digivolution costs reduced by one. So you'll be able to warp into this one and then you'll Digivolve into this for free, then activate its effect for Digivolve cost three and then ignore Digivolution requirements. If it's Digivolve by the fact, delete that Digimon at the end of the turn, which you're just going to go into Ancient Gurumon, who has basically return one of your opponent's Digimon or lower to hand and when effect adds a card to your opponent's hand your opponent adds the top card of their security stack to hand and then on deletion you may return one tamer or digimon with hybrid in traits to your hand and then play one tamer without paying its cost the deck really synergizes and tries to multi-attack and it does a good job at it even if you lose out on it you have at least the second inheritable lines that'll give you a draw on the second crack back with ancient guru you know the new koji just guarantees when an effect adds a card to your hand, gain a memory, then the Sigimon gains jamming. Jamming alone really helps out, and you have ancient protectors that you may return one Digimon card with hybrid or 10 warrior traits from your trash to your hand. Then you may play one Digimon with 10 warriors or tamer cards with an inheritable effect from your hand with the play costs reduced by four. Not a bad thing, it just does what you need it to. It just helps you out. Then we do have blue armor this deck isn't going anywhere to be honest with you what makes this deck scary is its innate ability to keep it a on your opponents on your turn being a whopping guess what 15k there's a lot of decks that have trouble getting around that i mean this deck really shined more and took ahead of the pack because of flame Dramon here because of that raid and then when this Digimon's attack target is switched. Your opponent adds the top card of security stack to their hand. Being able to trigger Magna X's ability by your opponent's own adding means you can now make lethal scarier even against them with Magna X. So just keeping that in mind, sometimes that just Flame Dramon is just going to raid in and just trash a free security. This gives you the aggression play that the deck really wanted long term. Then we have Red Hybrid. Red Hybrid definitely started introducing one little found mechanic, and that's Impmon here. This one allows you to reduce your Dark Dragon or Evil Dragon trace reduced by the evolution cost by one. So this now lets you do the whole combo similar to Garurumon, but using your raising area as a valid target. So what do I mean by that? If we take a look at BT-17, the big boys here you want is Burning Greymon and a Goonie. Then you kind of just go into your Ancient Greymon. 
So Burning Greymon, same thing. When attacking the Digimon, may Digivolve into a card with hybrid in its traits from your hand with a Digival Shakura reduced by one. So your Aguni goes into this. This Impmon just makes it big and beefy. So as these inheritables stack pretty quickly because you're going to go from Impmon for cost of two, swing into a Goonie, swing in with Burning Gray to Digivolve into a Goonie, to which will di Digivolve into Ancient Greymon for a cost of a five turn. That's not terrible for a stack evolution like this. I mean, this is what you would kind of do with your you know, Digivolve on Takuya play, right? Impmon just facilitates that same play but with your stack and then you basically do the same thing for that price. You take out so many securities, you pop something and then it gets deleted at the end of the turn. Not a bad trade off for this deck. The deck applies a decent amount of pressure. Then we have yellow vaccine the armors. Let's be straight here. The deck hasn't changed much, really hasn't just hyper focuses on doing what it wants to do at the end of the day. Then we have the new vortex deck. It's got some decent support, actually. The deck has a lot of things going for it, right? You know, you have the starter deck and EX7 just giving it support, allowing the deck to be able to do what it wants to do with its Vortex ability. So when one of your Digimon attacks an opponent's Digimon by spending this Tamer, switch the attack target to another one of your opponent's Digimon or players. Just allows switching targets. And then this card here is just when did you always spend one digimon then unspend one digimon alters when this digimon becomes unspended this digimon is infected by your opponent's digimon effects and gets plus 3000 db for the turn and vortex is the keyword here at the end of your turn this digimon may attack an opponent's digimon this digimon may attack with the effect on the turn it was played so it gets around a little bit of its summing sickness and then you have its other form that ex7 introduced when did you one attacking suspend one digimon if this Effect suspends your Digimon, return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the bottom of their deck. Vortex and security plus one. And then you have Grand Gale doing the Vortex shenanigans as well. One Digivolving suspend one Digimon. If this Digimon is, if this effect suspends one of your Digimon, this Digimon isn't affected by your opponent's Digimon effects until the end of opponent's turn. When this Digimon attacks an opponent's Digimon, you may unsuspend this Digimon. So all in all, unsuspending itself, trying to get some multi attacks in, or just having a good blocker built just so that you're ready for your opponent coming at you. And then you have Gabu Bonds here being Gabu Bonds. Nothing too crazy out of the ordinary here. As you know how the deck kind of operates, it uses a lot of stun tactics. It uses, you know, Bonds to swing in once, twice, three times total. Matt Ishida to help warp into the Gabu Bonds to get those security attacks in. But you also have a way of stunning with Metal Garumon as well. You know, being able to stun their digimon so they can't suspend is huge and as it combos nicely with the new map from bt15 but all in all the deck kind of does what it wants to do always and that is the multi-attack like a theme and then dragon links was the deck i chose because who doesn't like the hina plays so the deck is quite straightforward and simple the new cards that it kind of got was very important because volcanic Dramon definitely lets you guarantee you're playing one you know, bot, place one from your hand without paying its cost. So you get your mega back up out to the board and then metallic Dramon takes one from trash. So they kind of just even even each other out and you're just getting a really big threat because their on plays are really powerful on play. This one deletes the lowest DP. And then when did you you can't your opponent can't play or move Digimon with 6000 DP or less until the end of their turn. And then Metallic Dramon, none of your opponents level four or lowers can Digivolve until the end of turn for its when Digivolve went on play when attacking the Digivolve four of one of your opponents Digimon. Metallic Dramon and Volcanic Dramon were great additions to the deck. It definitely made the deck more stronger than it was. And that's very important. And they're beefy bodies. 13,000 DP is nothing to scoff at. But at the end of the day, you're going to have Hina. They're going to it's awesome that Hina makes it so that it's a on play deck that does have the ability to use its digivolving effects. So at the end of the day, it has a lot of potential to apply pressure to your opponent, and it's nothing wrong with that. But as you know, guys, this is the last deck we're going to talk about. So I think this was a great look at EX7, even though this says otherwise. But, but all in all, though, 
163 new decks starting from the beginning of the of ex7 to the end not bad to see where it goes from but guys hopefully you enjoyed the video hit that like button hit that subscribe button stay safe stay healthy and i'll catch you next one peace